Good morning, good afternoon, good evening class. This is Mr. Arosena. And today we're going to expand or continue working with scale statements and scale factors. Uh, yesterday, uh, or this last lesson, we discussed how to write a scale factor and how to briefly use it in terms of using it as a kind of a proportionality type of math problem. Today we'll continue our study and we'll actually use the scale statements that we were able to construct from the previous lesson and we'll apply them to problems um, that you might see as you uh, when you leave this class as you go about doing your own regular business okay so first uh, we'll jump right into an example so on a blueprint uh, one quarter inch is equal to one foot this is usually a common occurrence although they won't be usually read as one quarter inch equals one foot they'll probably have something like one centimeter equals one foot or one inch equals was one foot or something like that. Okay, this is why the first example, the first thing we want to do on this example is write the statement in the form one to some factor x. Okay, and the B part is uh, what is the actual length of the room that measures three and three quarter inches on the blueprint. All right, so let's do A part first. A part, so one to x. So when writing a scale statement, when writing a scale statement, we want the statement to be uh, in the same unit. Okay, so change, change to, in this case, I'll change to inches. Okay, change to inches. I'm going to change all units to inches. We've already got the first one, which is one quarter. One quarter inch to one foot, but I'm going to change the one foot to its inches equivalent. So we'll say one foot is 12 inches. So we'll do this. Okay. Now, in order to change, um, to get rid of that one quarter inch equals 12 inches, we'll just multiply this side by four. Okay, and then we'll multiply this side by four. Okay, that will get rid of the fraction. So those fractions will cancel out. So we'll left with one. And on this side we have forty-eight. Well, yeah. so this is the this is a scale statement: one to forty-eight, or you could write it as one over forty-eight. Okay. So the original, or is the model, is one forty-eighth the size of the original. Okay. All right. So that's our scale statement: one to forty-eight. Now, we want to write, next part, B part asks us, what is the actual length of the room if it measures three and three quarter inches on the blueprint? Well, our scale statement is one over 48, okay, equals, now three and three quarters, you can write the three quarters as a decimal, so three Point seven five, and we have an unknown amount on the actual length like that. So remember, uh, if you forget, why is the three point seven five on top? Well, this is the blueprint length. Blueprint length, and this one over here, it's also the blueprint length. Okay. So if you're not sure where to put the numbers, just ask yourself, what is this? Is this number on the blueprint or is this number the actual size of the room? In this case, the three and three quarter inches is on the blueprint. So we'll put that in the same spot on the other side of the equal sign as the number one is on the blueprint side. All right, so with that in mind, or with that written out, now it just comes an issue of just cross multiplying and dividing and that will give us an answer of x equals 3.75 so 3.75 times 48 so it gives us an answer of 1200 and it was a 127.2 inches. Okay. Well, 
So that is the actual length. 127.2 inches is the length of the actual room. Okay. And all we had to do was use our scale statement, set it up as a proportionality, and then just cross multiply and divide. Okay. Let's move on to the next example. So in this example, uh, we have a picture uh, of a man measures 2.3 centimeters. He has a height of 1.78 meters, and he's standing beside a flagpole with a height of 7.6 centimeters in the picture. And we want to know what is the actual height of the flagpole. Now, we could write a scale statement for this uh, problem, help us solve it, but that's, we, that's actually a step we can skip. And the reason we can skip that step is because the flagpole and the man are in the same picture. And we're going to assume that the picture doesn't move, doesn't get larger as we look at the flagpole compared to as we look at the man. So because the picture is exactly the same, um, the scale of the man is going to be the same as the scale statement for the flagpole. So this problem, we can just write as follows. And we don't even need to change the, um, the units for this because, again, same picture, same scale. So we'll write the following. 2.3 centimeters of the man divided by the 1.8 or 1.78 meters of the uh, man. So again, this is uh, very similar to the model divided by original equation we had last time. This time the model happens to be the man, which is 2.3 centimeters. The height of the man is 1.78 meters. Now. Because the model, or because the man has the same scale as the flagpole, we can put in the flagpole measurement like that, and we can call the flagpole actual height x as follows. And like with the other problems we discussed so far, it's just a simple matter of cross multiplying and dividing. So 7.6 times 1.78 and divide by 2.3 and we get the height of the tree or height of the flagpole sorry to the nearest tenth 5.9 meters there we go okay. so if the in, in this particular problem because again the man and the flagpole are in the same picture they effectively have the same scale statement and we can just set up a proportionality ratio just like we did yesterday in the last lesson okay, when we were dealing with proportions. All right, uh, the next uh, example, I'll show you guys a picture of uh, a model. So here, so this is the model of a from the new Star Wars, uh, the T-70 X-Wing. Uh, it's a quite a nice looking model. Uh, the scale of this model is 1 to 270. So this model is 270 times smaller than the original. So that's what that scale of the model is saying. Okay. Now, what this particular question is asking is, if the original T-70 X-Wing is supposed to be 12.5 meters long, how long is this model in centimeters? Okay, well, for this, we have the scale statement is 1 to 270. So 1 to 270, basically, we can write it as this, 1 over 270 equals. Now we're looking for the length of the model. The model, if we go back to the equation we had the other day. The equation was model divided by original. So the model goes on top, the original goes on the bottom. So the original measurement is 12.5 meters. But because we want the length in centimeters, we have to change our 12.5 meters to centimeters. And we do that by multiplying it by 100. So we'll get 12.5 times 100 will be 12, 1,250 centimeters. Okay, then we'll go x. So the length of the model, using this scale statement, will just be a simple cross multiply divide. 
So we'll take our 1,250 centimeters of the original and we'll divide it by the 270 scale, or sorry, multiply by 1 first, then divide by 270. So the length of the model, according to this equation, is going to be about 4.6 centimeters long. Okay, and for a toy model, that's actually not too bad. Because you don't want the toy to be too big, otherwise it becomes kind of unwieldy. Or it could be easily broken, or just really hard to transport, really hard to package. And if, uh, if you're a toy manufacturer, having something that's easily broken or too hard to transport um, could actually be quite costly in the long run. Alright, so that's how we can use scale statements to help us figure out lengths, help us f um, figure out how to either model something, if we're making a model in the case of the X-Wing, or in the case of the example up here, how to build something from a model. Okay. Alright, you guys should, have, uh, should be able to complete the assignment. Some of the questions may require you to actually measure things, so be sure you guys have a ruler.